So yeah, uh, being the mekabel, the receiver, also means being the nurturer. Like the Gemara puts it in very simple language. The husband brings home money. Money you can't eat. So now you have to nurture that money into food. Or the husband brings home wheat. The, the wife turns the wheat into bread. The, ha the, the husband builds a house. The woman turns it into a home. That's called nurturing. So building a house is not nurturing? No, because there's no house. What are you nurturing? You have to make a house where there is no house. It's not called nurturing. But if you have something and you turn it into something bigger and better, that's called nurturing. So even in making a baby, the husband is, doesn't nurture. The husband starts the process. The mother turns it into a full-fledged baby. And that's also the difference between Chachma and Bina. Men have chachma, women have more bina. What is bina? Meivin dover metoich dover. You give somebody an idea, and they can develop that idea into a whole system. But finding an idea, starting an idea, that's not nurturing. That's creating. That's providing. Producing. So the difference between a woman being the, the receiver, is that without having to start anything new, she can turn whatever there is into better. So the husband goes from not having to having. The, the mother, the woman, goes from what there is to something better. Could be that in the end, for practical purposes, the woman works harder and does more than the man. But she's working with what already exists, whereas the man has to discover or create or gain something that they don't have. That's why the men are called aggressive. When you want to start something new, that's called aggressive. When you're taking care of what's already there, that's called mothering. Nurturing. The same thing is true with Yiddishkeit. You can say, a person doesn't know and is not keeping mitzvahs. Okay, you got to get him to start keeping mitzvahs. Or you can say, he's already a Jew, just nurture. Nurture what's already there. That's the difference between a masculine approach and a feminine approach. If you are already a Jew... Use it. You don't have to start something new. Does that help a little bit or what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very often we say men are the doers and women are the receivers. Hey, women do more. But, but in nurturing, not in starting something new. That's why you see in the language there's a difference. A man and a woman get married, and they're both on the telephone telling their friends that what happened. The woman says, Give me mazel tov, I'm married. The man says, Hey, the other day I got married. The woman is celebrating what's already there. He is excited that it wasn't there, and now it is. I got married. The woman says, I am married. Uh, they build a house. They design a kitchen. They move in. The woman says, ah, this is home. The man said, yeah, but I think we need to add another. <laughs> he wants to do something new. What's already done is already done. So when Mashiach comes, men are going to have a, a, a hard time. Women are going to be thrilled. It's so good already 
can imagine how much good we can make out of it. And the men are going to think, so that's it? Don't have to fix anything? No, no, no. What, what am I going to do? <laughs> a woman looks at her baby and it's just perfect. A father looks at the baby and says, how much is it going to cost to send him to yeshiva? <laughs> Okay, so I want to tell you an interesting thing. But I want to start with a question. Is there anything in Yiddishkeit that we don't understand? Well, many things. Hmm? Many things we don't understand. Many. Oh. In percentages. Do we understand more or understand we understand less? understand less? There's more that we don't know than what we do know. Take a look at that. If you read all those svarim, you still don't know what's written in there. <laughs> we learn and learn and learn, and in the end, yeah, we don't know. Something wrong with that? Epistimnisht. No? 4,000 years we're learning, and we don't know. Who said this? Is that possible? We're so slow. <laughs> we'll let it and let it and let it and then we don't know. There is nothing that we don't understand. Nothing. Torah is the Ebesh des Chochmah and you learn Torah, you know everything. What don't we know? Father <coughs> Parallel. Hmm? Father Corallo? Oh, why? The Gemara gives an answer for that too. We just don't like the answer. <laughs> he says, know or understand? There's two different things. Knowing and understanding. Both. What's the question? Do we know or do we understand? Both. Both? Yeah. So we don't know anything because at the end of the day, you can't know Hashem. Can't. No, it's not mm. possible. We could? I don't think so. How could I know Hashem? There's actually a mitzvah to know Hashem. I know Hashem, but I don't really know. What does that mean? <laughs> it's like, I know my wife. I don't really know. <laughs> there's so much in our brain that we can't understand. I can't stand the concept of I, there's no eye that sees. I can't stand the concept. I know this is concept, but I can't understand it. It's not for my you brain. Can. Yeah, you can. I could. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> if you learn it, you study it, you understand it. What's, it's what's just so... the thing I'm saying, but I don't understand it. Uh -huh. That's the problem. I can understand that there's an I, Hashem knows, like, Mamash Hashgach of Pratis Hashem. I can understand it. Yeah. I know it, but I don't understand it. I feel like she's scared, but like, people are scared of. I'm not scared. I know it, but I don't under really understand. Because we didn't. Yeah, not smart enough to understand. You think well, no, isn't it like the more you know, the you know more that you know less? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not like, saying. You know, that, you know, like, idea is to know that you know no. nothing. I'm not saying that every Jew knows everything, but everything is available. If you want to know, look it up. Oh, it's available. Yeah. Well, no, but the Ken is Fashtain. I'm not saying every everyone Fashtain. I would McKen Fashtain. What have the Chachamim been doing all these years? We had this class. Balichuva women. And this one woman was sitting there many years ago. And I see a, there's something on her mind, a, 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 something's. So I say, Do you want to say something? She said, No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I said, Oh. I said, No, if you want to say something, you could, this is an open, you know, you can. She says, I, I don't want to ruin everything. I said, I said, You don't want to ruin everything? Like what? She says, no, the, everybody here kind of believes and, and I don't want to ruin it. I said, you mean you have a question that if you ask that question, you'll ruin everybody's amuna? <laughs> she says, yeah. I said, boy, now I really need to hear your question. <laughs> what is this question you think is going to ruin everything and destroy Yiddishkeit? 
Anyway, finally, I convinced her to ask. She says, okay, you asked for it. My question is, who created God? I said, oh boy. Yep, Yiddishkeit is over. <laughs> no one ever asked that question before. We don't have an answer. Huh? Every five-year-old asks that question. <laughs> and we don't know the answer? You mean nobody created him? So, how, so where did he come from? He created himself. God. No, that's what a God is. That? That's what a God is. What is? That he was there. He was always there. And, and we don't understand. Always we don't have an idea. In our minds, we don't. What? Isn't that one of the times? We don't what? <laughs> That's what I'm just talking about. No, that's not what it's talking about. So I want to I want to share something with you, and this is this is important in almost every aspect of life. What does it mean, Gamzul Lateva? Everything's for the good. Really? <laughs> Everything is for the good? We don't see it. We know it. We know it. Ultimately, Ultimately yeah. Hashem does it. That'll be good. If it's good, why doesn't it look good? Why doesn't it feel good? Huh? Time to get a little of the story. We believe we kind of understand that we don't understand everything, and we're at peace with that. Fine. I I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and I'm okay with that. Tomorrow, I'll find out. What but what, what does that have to do with being good or bad? Something hurts. So no, it's for the good. What do you mean it's for the good? What's good about it? So let me let me explain this to you. The word bad, what does it mean? Something bad happened. What does that mean? What is the word bad in English? What does it mean? Not good. <laughs> it means I hate when that happens. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts, right? Hurt is bad? Hmm? Evil? Yes, evil. So hurt is a bad thing? Not always. It's uncomfortable. No. Labor pains are bad. It's quite hard. <laughs> there are there are moments where you there are moments where you can't wait for the pains to start already. So, so you can't say pain is bad. It hurts. Hurt is bad. An operation hurts. It's bad. How about tragedy? Tragedy is bad. Very sad. Very sad. Right? So an old man passes away in his bed. That's bad? That's not tragedy. It's not? Died. But he lived his life. So, so here's how it works. Here's how it works. An operation is not bad. But if the operation was performed on the wrong patient, that's bad. <laughs> uh, labor pain is not bad. False labor pain. <laughs> oh, that's bad. An old man dies, that's not bad. A child, God forbid, oh, that's bad. Why? It seems like there's no purpose. It's, it's like what they call in, in uh, legal language, wrongful death. There's, there's a rightful death and there's a wrongful death. The word bad means, literally, it shouldn't have happened. 
labor pains have to happen. You can't say it shouldn't happen. An operation, you need an operation. You have to have an operation. Nobody lives forever, so people die. But an operation on the wrong patient, oh, that shouldn't have happened. False labor pains, who needs it? That shouldn't happen. And a young person dying, God forbid, no, that shouldn't happen. Right? So the word bad doesn't mean painful, it doesn't mean tragic, it doesn't mean disappointing. It means something happened, shouldn't, it shouldn't have happened. So the Torah says, nothing bad happens. What does that mean? Nothing painful happens? No. It means nothing happens that shouldn't have happened. So when a person says something bad happened, you're saying it shouldn't have happened. How do you know whether it should or shouldn't happen? Who knows that? That's why we can't call anything that happens, we can't call it bad. You can say it's tidvai. And that's not enjoyable. So when we complain to the Ebrishta to take away the pain, we're not saying take away something bad. The pain is obviously supposed to happen. But we're allowed to be mispalu that it should stop. Not because it shouldn't happen, but because tidvai. But there's a much deeper and more important idea behind it. If you say something happened and it shouldn't have happened, this is literally a vedasajan. If it shouldn't have happened, who made it happen? If a person made it happen. Oh, one second. Good, good. There's only one Abish then. If he made it happen, then it's not bad. If he didn't make it happen, then who did? So if you actually think that something can happen and it shouldn't happen, you, your mom is believing in another Abish then. So it shouldn't happen because the Ebershtet didn't cause it. But it did happen. Chas v'shalom. How can something happen without the Ebershtet? And also the typical question of Bechi Rav versus... One second, one second. Before we, get, yeah, before we get to the human being. Some people say, a sutan. The Sutan made it happen. This is so not kosher. A Sutan can't do anything. The job of a Sutan is to confuse you. But it can't make something happen. It can't build a house. What's the dying, Hara? Also not. If it shouldn't happen, then it wouldn't happen. Because only the Abish that makes things happen. And if he's making it happen, then obviously it should. So to say something bad happened, who is your Abishta who makes bad things happen? It's the same concept as saying that Hashem doesn't make any mistakes. Exactly. Whatever happened was not a mistake. Because nothing else... This is what happened, whether you like it or not. Because he did it, and no one else can. So how can you say this shouldn't have happened? If it shouldn't have happened, how did it? Well, what is the idea to change things? To free the hostages, to, you know, to that for natural disaster. What is the idea to these things? So We're diving that he that should change. change. That he, the Abish, they should change it. Change his mind. Change his mind, yeah. We can't be upset about what happened. What was it? It's still meant to happen. You could feel the pain. But why are we telling him? Right. You can complain about the pain. 
Yeah. Hans Chang, he knows better. Really good. Full stop. Yeah. Uh, we we want to know that. Why should I do this? We just want to stop it for now. So the house has come to change. One, yeah, yeah. One, one thing at a time. Let's let's finish the definition of, n of bad. Somebody, you're asking, but what about a person who has freedom of choice, who decides to hurt you? So now something is happening to you that shouldn't have happened. No, it should have happened. If you decide to hurt somebody else, right, right. Their problem that there was a shliach who stole your pain that you were supposed to get. Oh, right, right. So number one. So one second, one second. Number one, a person has bechir, and he can choose what he should not have chosen. That's bad. So the word bad exists because when a human being chooses the wrong thing. It shouldn't have happened. So how did it happen? You have Bechir. But what about the pain that his choice causes? Somebody decides to hurt you. That shouldn't have happened. The decision shouldn't have happened. If it does happen and you actually feel pain, that's not coming from the guy that's coming from the Eibushter. What is the explanation? The Eibushter gave us Bechira that we can choose, not that we can do whatever we want. Somebody wants to kill somebody, he's guaranteed that he's free to do it. He's free to choose it, right? It's freedom of choice not freedom of success. You want to rob a bank, you're going to succeed? If everybody who wanted to rob a bank would succeed, there would be no banks. So we make choices, and either it succeeds or it doesn't. How come? Why don't I have Bechira? You say, you do have Bechira. You have the Bechira to choose it. So why am I not successful? Because your choice has no authority over somebody else's life. So because you have Bechira, somebody's going to have to suffer? Of course not. So when is a person's bad Bechira successful, and when is it not? Right. Right. So no human being can hurt you no matter how much they want to. But what's it doing bad for you? Well, if he explains it to you, it's not going to hurt you. Right. So if you hear it explain, it's going to hurt you. I'm talking about the person who's constantly making bad choices, and you're constantly receiving it. But it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't go, it would bother me. I said what I wanted. So then it's really... Look, it's very simple. Well, well, yeah, it's very, very simple. Halacha. You're not allowed to go in a mukam sakuna. And if you go in the mukam sakuna, you're going to get hurt? Other yeah, other nisht. But you're not allowed to go. You're not allowed to go even though you might not get hurt. But if it's a mokum sakona, or a person who is a sakona, stay away. Say, no, whatever the Ebrishta wants. Yeah, the Ebrishta wants you to avoid sakona. Not always is that sakona avoidable. Right. But that who did that, who created that? <laughs> so you see what 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 we just did here think it through what we just did here we took a statement gam zula toiva which didn't make any sense it's a mystery right 
And now we understand it. Gamzula Teva means it was meant to happen. And bad means it shouldn't have happened. So since things that shouldn't happen can't happen, then Gamzula Teva. Just to have the question of creating God. She wants to do this whole thing on it. So, who, so like, why would you answer someone that asks who created Hashem? Oh. <laughs> we were told like to ask such questions like you're gonna be sent to me, I don't know, to get the answer, right? Oh my <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me let me see if let me see if I can explain it simply that you can even say it to a child. We ask the question, who created God? Because we know that everything has to be created. Because everything we see was created. So we think that that's reality. The reality is that things have to be created. Actually, it's the opposite. If something has to be created, it's not true. Yesterday it didn't exist, now all of a sudden it does. It's not a real existence. It's made up, it's manufactured. What is real? Real is something that doesn't need to be created because it really is. So when we, when we say Hashem Elekechem Emes, what does Emes mean? It didn't pop up from someplace. It didn't. It wasn't manufactured out of nothing. It really is real. And if it's real, then it is. Who made it? If you make it, it's not real. So how do we know that this is not the Ebershtim? Because yesterday it didn't exist. So the definition of reality, we think reality is created. If you're created, you're real. No, if you're created, then you weren't real. So the Torah is telling us, the created world is not reality. The creator is reality. What does reality mean? You don't have to invent him. You don't have to create him. You don't have to produce him. He's real. So the question is not, how can Abish to be without being created? That's called real. The question is, how can this exist when yesterday it didn't? That means all of us are not real. <laughs> physical is not real. The physical is not real. Here today, gone tomorrow, that's not real. The idea, no, the idea the that question. that you can suffer from someone else's bad choices. That is very common in marriage. You're, you're married to a person, whether it's a man or a woman. You got to put up with stuff. And they don't own, the other the other party doesn't always make how many times have you hurt your husband? Don't have to answer. <laughs> how many times do children hurt their parents? Too much. Way too much. Now, there was a tzaddik, I forget who they, they say it about. Tzaddikim don't forget. Ein shikha lufnei kisei kvedecha. By tzaddikim, there's no forgetting. They remember everything. This, this tzaddik, I forget who it was, which obviously means that I'm not a tzaddik. So when he became bar mitzvah, he asked his mother for forgiveness. For what? For kicking her when he was a fetus. He 
kicked your mother? <laughs> We're so good at being guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty from before I was born. But how many times do children hurt their parents? It's, it's horrible. In fact, I was talking to a group of uh, Talmud Torah students. I'm trying to get them to think about doing a mitzvah. So they're in Talmud Torah, whatever that means. It's a city Talmud Torah. And um, they've been learning Jewish studies for eight years. So I said to them, can you think of a mitzvah you're not doing yet? And they're sitting there thinking and thinking. <laughs> I said, any mitzvah, just a mitzvah that you're not doing yet. Finally, one of them says, oh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I've never saved a whale. <laughs> That's the only mitzvah he could think of, which isn't even a mitzvah. So I said, okay, can, can, can you think of something you did that is absolutely horrible? Did you ever do anything... Okay, you're not perfect, you did things that are... But did you do anything that you consider horrible? They all said, mm, no. I said, have you, ever, have you ever made your mother cry? Yeah. So you don't think that's horrible? No. I said, that is horrible. <laughs> you made your mother cry, you don't think that's horrible? No, I mean, you know, we got into... When you live with somebody, you're, you're, you're going to be hurt or you're going to cause hurt. It's almost inevitable. I'm not talking about physical abuse, but you disappoint, you promised something and you didn't do it, and now you're... Causing pain. How do you handle that? Not, not the pain you caused, the pain that you received. Say, this is bad. My marriage is bad. Careful with that word. <laughs> bad means it shouldn't have happened. So what's going on in your life should not have happened? Then who caused it? My husband. Oh, he's the Sutton? <laughs> Even if he was, he can't cause it. <laughs> Makes such a difference when we understand this. I think I mentioned yes, last time, very, very important to, to make a marriage good takes only one person. Amos? One, <laughs> one person can make a marriage or break a marriage. Oh, break, yeah. So if the marriage is bad, it's all his fault. 95%. <laughs> so one man can ruin a marriage, but he can't make the marriage good. 